All right, so. <laughs> yeah, the, the way we got this set up is I sent Tara a laptop with um, window with Windows taken off and OS X put on there because she doesn't know how to use Windows. I know how to use Windows. I dislike Windows strongly. Well, I know how to use it. Well, regardless, we... I just think it's stupid. I managed to get that to work, and now you're in the new place, and we have it, you know. It's, it's funny that watching people state the obvious over and over again. Yes, you can hear background noise on Terra's... You're very good. Yes, I'm sorry. Oh. I will work on it. We'll, wor we'll work out the kinks. I mean, this is literally my second day here. I moved in yesterday. Oh, somebody wants a nummy treat. Half my clothes didn't make it until today. Mm. So, you know. What about the other half? Well, half my clothes made it yesterday, but then I realized I had no work clothes for today. I have to wear all black for work, and I packed all my black work clothes in one bin, and the bin didn't make it here until today. So I had to, like, cobble together a workout for today. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> well... We will move on from here, and maybe I can clean some of this up in post. We will decide, kind of see. I feel and so bad. They're still stating the obvious. Aren't they precious? Ah, mm -hmm. the choir pedantic. I know a thing, and I will tell people that I know a thing. Okay, so this week we even have, I didn't think this was possible, we even have a Super Bowl story where it's, this is why we can't have nice things. So, let's get started. Where's the intro? That would help. Where's my intro? Uh... Fuck you tonight, computer. You just everything. Just fuck everything. Okay. Each week, Catherine goes out in the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings back here for a little segment we like to call "What the fuck is wrong with you?" And tonight, initially, we were even starting off. It's the Super Bowl. This is why we can't have nice things. So. Remember the guy who got into uh, Mandela's uh, Wake Memorial yes. and did the uh, the sign language bit? Yes. Well, apparently he started a trend of sorts. Uh oh. Uh yeah. Um. Let's bring this over on the screen. Nine Eleven Truther breached Super Bowl security. Oh, that's right. I saw this. Oh, this guy. This, this fucking guy. This fucking guy. Uh, we got a name on him now. What's his name? Um, long after the Seahawks had hoisted the Lombardi Trophy, one Brooklyn man, a 30-year-old independent journalist who described himself as a 9-11 truther, stole the stage from Super Bowl MVP Malcolm Smith. For the most part, the league's largest spectacle had passed without any serious gaps, but Matthew Mills who snuck into MetLife Stadium without a ticket or media credential. Uh, likely won't, shouldn't sit well with NFL. Uh, Mills crashed Smith's post-game interview and interjected his opinion on 9-11. Uh, what better time to do that? Yeah, that's because that's, that's what, you know. That's your audience. That's your audience. Not, the government is covering up 9-11. That's, that's what you want to... Okay. <laughs> I think more people are concerned about the conspiracy that caused Peyton Manning to choke so bad. How the fuck? All right, now, you know, I, I've gone to conventions sometimes as, as journalists with press, with press credentials. And those are tricky to get, but not impossible. You just have to, you know. But this is the Super Bowl. Yeah. This isn't Dragon Con. And even though Dragon Con's very, very nice, 
not exactly what I would call, you know, top Fort Knox security. This is the Super Bowl. Kind of a big deal. You need to check the people who are wandering in and out of the motherfucker. Yeah. Because, you know, I would just like to see this guy walk out of there with the trophy going. Well, did you see the guy that brought the trophy out onto the field? Yeah, he looked like he looked like he was dead. I know. Like they brought out some desiccated corpse to carry out the Vince Lombardi trophy. I swear his eyes were clouded over. He looks like the tall man from the Phantasm movies. Creepy as fuck. And he's like, have your trophy. So I'm sitting there like, you know what, Peyton Manning? Don't even worry about it because clearly that motherfucker is cursed with the curse of the mummy. You don't want to touch that trophy. Lurch the trophy. All of the Seahawks this time next week are going to be like throwing up locusts and covered in boils and sores. And it's going to be horrible. And someone will be, will be betting on it. And just, and uh, really, again, you said this is not your audience. Oh, God. Have the truthers not gotten this yet? We really don't care anymore. Maybe it was true. Maybe it's not. You have annoyed the shit out of us to the point where we just don't care. Well, and the American attention span isn't really made to sustain it anyway. Like, but Regardless, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those... Well done. We don't give a fuck. Because you have been just the biggest dickbags about it. I just wonder why you choose this particular forum. Like, okay, the Super Bowl probably has the largest audience in the country mm. all sitting in front of their TV at, on one given day. So fine, you do something during the Super Bowl. The post-game press conferences, not... Nobody's watching! I know, no one's fucking watching. No one cares. Like, only the really diehards are watching the yeah. post-game press conferences. So... Like, Storm Bruno Mars. Everyone watched that. Except me, because I was watching Grown Ups too, because my nephew has to watch that movie every day. He's eight. What can you do, you know? Well, speaking of, ooh, you touch my tra-la-la, let's continue on along the Douchebag Express. You like Girl Scout cookies? Yes! I like Girl Scout cookies. Oh. Every single person in the world that I know of likes Girl Scout cookies. Samoas are what's up, yo. Except this fuck. And I can't even believe this one, but it's... it. Yep. No shit. There I was. Man allegedly pulls gun on Girl Scout selling cookies. I thought this was something else. This is so much worse. This is from from uh, Los Angeles. I thought this was going to be the people trying to boycott them because supposedly the girls nope. love abortion. Nope. This is a guy pulled a fucking gun. Authorities in Temecula say a man pulled a gun on a Girl Scout who was going door to door selling cookies Sunday. Uh, police responded to an assault with a deadly weapon call. Police said the victim, a minor, was selling cookies door to door when a resident opened his door and pointed a gun at the girl. Scout's father witnessed the alleged incident and called police. Now, you guys are going assault with a deadly weapon. Even pointing a gun at someone counts as an assault. So. I mean, there's such a thing as verbal assault. Yeah. She didn't get shot, but the fucker, you know. I understand solicitors can be annoying. I do. You know, you, you don't want. Girl Scout cookie. The solution is not, you get a sign. You get a dog at worst. You just don't answer the door. Right. You don't reach for your gun and pull it on a prepubescent child. Who's just trying to raise money for her jamboree. It's Girl Scout cookies. That's like, that's Why like. What would you do? Like, just don't answer the door. Just don't answer the fucking, you, you look outside. I don't want any fucking cookies. You're done. It's not like she's going to knock all day. She's going to knock maybe twice and then move the fuck along. Right. She's got shit to do. Yeah. Was she alone? Did she not have No, she had her dad with her and okay. still pulled her gun. I mean, Jesus Christ. 
I used to have to, I mean, I think it, we all had to sell shit door to door as kids. Cause I, yeah. you know, I had to sell like candy bars I had to sell and, candy. Twirling and raffle tickets and, you know. I mean, for fucking shit, this dude, how big of an asshole are you? Pretty big asshole. That is amazing. I have done some dickbag things, and he does not look like a happy man either. He beats grumpy looking fuck. Yeah. I have done some dickbag things in my life, but I ain't never pulled no gun on no Girl Scout. No. You know? And you know what? You totally fucked up, buddy, because those cookies are delicious, and I'm confident you're blacklisted now. Now, if she was out of the Samoas, then I could understand pulling a gun. You get no tag along for the rest of your fucking life. If they didn't have the Samoas. I know, that's serious. You want those Samoas. I'd, I'd maybe pull a gun. That, I don't think I'd pull a gun over it. Because someone else is going to have Samoas. Outside the supermarket every single day for the next month, they're going to have Samoas. Okay. Still, it's, it's not that serious, you know? So, um, there are parts of this country that are wonderfully modern and wonderfully integrated and that, you know, it's, it's, it's the pinnacle of the 21st century. We're very, very proud of them. And there are parts of this country that aren't. And they, it's like the usual suspects with this shit. But I want to commend, I, I've got to commend them for at least trying to get closer, even though they're having problems with it. From Alabama, bestiality one step closer to being a crime. How many steps are there? Uh, the Alabama Senate today passed a bill to criminalize sexual contact with animals. Senate Bill 151 would criminalize sexual contact with animals with exemptions for acceptable animal husbandry and veterinary practices. State Senator Tom Watley sponsored the bill, which passed today with a no debate by a vote of 20 to 1. The lone dissenting vote was due to a common procedure in the legislature, or by a vote in the previous bill can be used for the next bill up for a vote. Because I was about to say... You, okay, you, so nobody actually voted against. Yeah, but that's, that's one of those you don't want to go on record as being the one guy no. who was... You do not want to be that guy. You do <laughs> yeah. not want to be pro-bestiality guy. Uh... Now, you're going, well, how the fuck is this possible? The end of the, the article is what, what murders me. Currently, bestiality is still legal in 14 states and the District of Columbia. Which makes perfect sense. Because it's a town full of rat fuckers. So, you know. And rats. Rats and rat fuckers. I, I, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it, the, if I was a legislator and I found out, wait, we don't have a law against bestiality, that would be on the docket tomorrow. Yeah. You'd think that'd be, that'd be pretty easy to get done. Five minutes. You know, oh, fuck animal. It, it, uh, you could campaign on that shit. Hey, guess what? You know what? You elected me. I was the guy who made it illegal to fuck animals. And there'd be maybe like one guy in the crowd who wouldn't vote for you, but, but I think he could live without that vote. Uh, I did not know that, that 14 states, 14 states, it's still legal to fuck animals. It's 2014 people. Yep. But Alabama right on up there. But here's what gets me. 14 states, it's still legal to fuck an animal, but there are states in which sodomy is still illegal. Like, sodomy between two consenting adults. Illegal. Fucking a goat. Legal. America! I just, I don't... Ow. But, you know, District of Columbia, you know, if 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 a senator or congressperson just wanted to go out one day and start having sex with a goat, they could do it on the floor of the Senate. I don't believe it's 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 illegal. 
Well, no, I don't. I think that would technically fall under, you know, public indecency and lewd behavior and that sort of thing. Maybe, or maybe a filibuster. You never know. Well, yeah, there's that. Parliamentary rules. You know what? I think it might it might make it all worth it to see John Boehner taking it up the rectum from a horse on the House floor. And now none of us are going to sleep tonight. My work here is done. So I was talking about earlier, we lost Philip Seymour Hoffman this week to heroin, and it sucks. And it was one of those, I cannot understand why why heroin is an attractive drug in any way, shape, or form. You know, I I don't know how you get started, but like, my mom was a substance abuse counselor, and she worked in methadone clinics with heroin addicts for years, and it's one of the toughest addictions to kick. So like, once once you're hooked on it, it's not about liking it anymore. Yeah. But I don't know how you get started. Well, um, in this case, you find it in your Happy Meal. McDonald's employee allegedly sold heroin in Happy Meals. Pittsburgh. McDonald's employee in Pittsburgh was arrested Wednesday after undercover police officers said they discovered her selling heroin in Happy Meal boxes. She needed Dennis, 26, was arrested after undercover law enforcement officials conducted a drug buy. Customers looking for heroin were instructed to drive th- to go through the drive-thru and say, I'd like to order a toy. The customer would then be told to proceed to the first window. They'd be handed a Happy Meal box containing heroin. What if, no, no, but think about like what terrible code that is. Because what if you really have your kid in the car and really just want a toy? Yes. Oh, we're getting it for free? Hey, honey, we got you a toy for free. It's heroin. It's heroin. Like, that's bad code. That is, well, it's in a Happy Meal box. No! Can you just leave my childhood in peace? Because I liked the Happy Meals when I was a kid because I got Legos in them and they were awesome. I did not get heroin in my Happy Meal. Heroin doesn't give you the munchies, does it? No. No, it gives you the nod, which is you are barely perceiving of the world. So, like, the actual Happy Meal isn't going to do you much good. No. I, I just, it... Oh, and she also had a little bit of marijuana, so apparently you could have it your way. Just, she looks She looks so pleased with herself in that mugshot. I know! She's like, well, you caught me. Darn. Oh, well, yeah, I had heroin. <laughs> what are you going to do? I mean, it is kind of a good racket, except for the terrible code phrase. I'm a little surprised she didn't get caught because some five-year-old didn't end up with a bag of heroin instead of a My Little Pony. You, I'm sorry, if you came to me and told me that the way to buy heroin was to go to the McDonald's drive through my first response would be, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Because, you know, I, my, my, my brain would be going, trap! You'd also assume there'd be some oversight. Like, McDonald's are riddled with cameras. There are cameras all the fuck. They have closed curtains. Inside curse. the drive-thru. Outside, outside the, the drive-thru. drive-thru. But- like, that shit is monitored. Oh, yeah, Emily, of course, Los Pollos Hermanos. Of course, yes. But that was a much smaller chain. <laughs> that was more controlled. They had, like, 40 stores. It's a whole different, <sighs> whole different follow up And it was the owner, not some random drive through kid. When you're the owner, you can get away with all kinds of shit. <laughs> Our last, speaking of getting away with all kinds of shit and a bunch of cameras... Um, our last story, we got video because this is kind of magic. Um, you ever seen one of those, uh, those bits where the, the television reporter is talking to people on the scene? They're on site. Yeah. Box Populi. Well, something a little strange happened during one of those segments. <laughs> I'm going to send you the article and I'm going to play everybody the video because this is, this is awesome. I know I'm already giggling, but, you know, that's me. Let's see. 
So, um, come on, let's get to it. Get to it. Woman steals ABC7 reporter's car on camera. Sarasota, it's Florida. Florida. It's Scam Awareness Month here at ABC7, and sometimes exposing these type of things can be hazardous. That was the case for 7 South News reporter jo Josh Taylor, who was investigating an alleged rental property scam. 12 years of covering stories in the Sun Coast, Josh has seen a lot of things. Getting carjacked is certainly its own chapter. I, I, let's bring it back, bring it up on screen so you guys can see it. It started out with a 91 year old Venice woman claiming she had rented an 11 bedroom home on Siesta Key for a family reunion. Turns out that after some code violations, the home now only has five bedrooms. She wanted her money back, but no, even then it was, ABC went looking for the ad answers and Josh was setting up his camera Friday afternoon when this happened. So she just walked up, took his shit, put it in the car, and drove the fuck away. Wow. That's, that's balls. Like, he's, <laughs> he's setting up a camera. He's got the fucking camera in hand. We how, call many stars, how many stars do you think that'd get you in Grand Theft Auto? <laughs> we call this shit admissible evidence. We call that shit stupid. I'm pretty much just sitting. My response would be, I cannot believe this shit. Is, she's actually, she's not really gonna. She's, oh like my God, just, she's really gonna. That's like the next step up from posting your stupid crime on Facebook because you're just cutting out the middle name. <laughs> And putting it directly on the news. Yep. You know, it's, 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 they can pass the savings on to you. I mean, I guess kudos for all the stupid with none of the effort. Because you don't have to do all that tedious posting to Facebook. I can understand getting a negative story in the paper would be, you know, something no one would want. Yeah, but the, you've kind of compounded the error, haven't you? Yes, this is... You're making it worse. This, this is this is not going to improve your situation. You're already going to court for one thing. The state's attorney's office will decide if price is charged with grand theft auto. I mean, I guess, I guess, you know, in the theory of you can only concentrate on one type of pain at a time. <laughs> like she, maybe she figured they'd forget about the whole rental <laughs> game. If I've, she stole the car. Well, unfortunately, but that's not how the justice system, the justice system can concentrate on a lot of things at a time. Yeah, this is two different courts. That's civil court. This is criminal yeah, court. They can they can multitask. Did she yell YOLO as she drove away? God, I hope. God, I hope that can that be over. Can we, can, can, uh... <laughs> I just, it, talk about, a computer wrote it. Talk about news as it happens. Giant brass balls. I just, I, that, that, I'm flabbergasted, honestly, because that's just My one of the. My question is, did he like follow her with the camera and trying to interview her? <laughs> ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Yeah. Why are you Can taking. Can I get a comment on why you're stealing my vehicle, ma'am? <laughs> I have my car back, please. I. It's one of those. It's, you know, this is a bad idea going into it. You have to. Because there's no end game here. Apparently not. It's. I've got it. Perfect solution. I'll steal the fucker's car. How did this solve anything? Because even if he didn't have a camera, he's right there. <laughs> and he can easily identify you. <sighs> I mean, the camera's kind of the cherry on top of the cake, but even without the camera, not a great plan. Uh, like Stody's, well, I just got my car, Jack. That's the current news. Back to you, Phil. Breaking news. My car is gone.
I guess I guess we learned this week that you know it's ha being daring can work for you, but it's a matter of application. Fortune favors the bold, but you got to know the difference between bold and moron. That's important. That's an important distinction. I don't. I just. We learned, we learned this. That some people really don't like Girl Scout cookies. I know. I didn't, didn't think it was. I didn't think that was humanly possible. I know. I thought they put crack in those things to prevent that sort of problem. There are ways to deal with solicitation. A gun That's is not one of them. Pulling a gun on a child? No. Because, yeah. There's pretty much never, ever a reason to pull a gun on a child unless you're in a zombie movie. Right. And that doesn't happen. Right. We learned that, you know, Happy Meal can have multiple meanings. Yeah. I think we've learned that before. Yeah, but this... I, but I can't remember the context. The racket they had, she had going there, man. They had, like, code words and all this shit. Did no one else at the fucking place notice that she was... I guess it's... I'm saying did no one notice. It's me. No one gives a fuck. They aren't paid enough to give a fuck. They're like, she doing something? I don't care. I'm doing my shit. Their, their corporate offices posted a blog recommending that they eat less fast food and we, telling them how much to tip their au pair. This is a company where there are no fucks to go nobody around. Nobody gives a shit anymore. We learned that um, it you can perhaps espouse an unpopular position, but there's a time and a place. You, you gotta choose your audience. Yeah, and... Don't annoy the audience because they're less likely to want to listen to what the fuck you have to say. Yeah. You know? And finally tonight, we learned you can legally have sex with a horse in Washington, D.C. Kind of explains Mitch McConnell. 